Hey everybody, Ron Burke, Editor-in-Chief for GamingTrend.com. Today we're going to check out Gotham Knights. Now, a lot have been said about <laughs> frame rate and uh, locks on said frame rate in the last couple of days before launch, and I wanted to touch base on what you can expect if you're playing this on PC. So we're going to be using a GeForce RTX 4090, and we're going to crank this thing all the way up and see what we can do here. Uh, currently I have my frame rate set to 144 to match my monitor, but we're going to switch to DLSS. Obviously, we have the usual suspects here. Quality uh, is going to give you the best quality, of course, with ultra performance giving you the best frame rate. Uh, we're going to go with quality. Uh, if you have frames to spare, you should be running on quality. We'll run ray tracing, motion blur off, bloom on. Quality presets are set to highest across the board. We'll apply that, and we will simply fire up the game and see what it looks like. I'm going to leave everything in default, and... Now obviously the cutscene is pre-rendered, so as you can see up in the corner, it is locked to 60 frames a second. All right, we're finally getting control of our character, so probably time to pick who's going to be our main character. I think I'm gonna go with Batgirl. All right, I think we're f oh, not quite free of the pre-rendered cutscenes. So just so you understand what you're looking at, uh, you've got up in the corner, uh, you've got frame view from NVIDIA. We are running uh, launch drivers. We're still on pre-release code for the game though, so there may be some improvements that we see post-launch. Uh, up top you see FPS, which is 60, 1% low, which is literally as low as it gets. That's usually during transitions that you see uh, those lows really drop. So you gotta let things kind of stabilize a little bit. Drop is obviously dropped frames. Uh, PPW is power per watt. And then below that we're looking at uh, the GPU frequencies and uh, temperatures. So looks like we're running at about 103 frames a second on PC uh, in this tight little corridor anyway. So let's get out here and see what there is to see. Now obviously these constrained areas are going to have the highest frame rate. When we get out into the larger world, that's when things have to work a little harder. But it is going to keep dropping the frame rate down to that 60 mark during these cutscenes. There is a purpose to that. It does keep things stable, and it ensures that it looks its very best, even if it's not the highest frame rate. 60 is going to be smooth. We are running at 4K, so it should be clean and crisp uh, when you take a look at it yourself. So it looks like that 109, 110 frame uh, range is holding true. Heading inside where there's a bunch of detail, probably will. Yep. So here we see a lot of RTX lighting, and we see that uh, we see that frame rate drop into the 80s and high 90s. So the more uh, points of light that we have uh, cascading through the scene, the more that's making the RTX engine work. But even so, uh, we're in the high 90s for frame rates. Mm, any 
anything for augmented reality here. Didn't see any AR objects in here. Oh, there we go. else here. This must be where Langstrom died. The cops cleared out of here way too fast. Langstrom must have been working when he was attacked. Significant blood loss here. So I do also want to point something out here. Uh, we're pushing the engine up to a hundred and some odd frames a second. And yes, I understand a 4090 is obscenely powered. But we are only taxing the GPU at somewhere between 40 and 60 percent. Uh, we're just not pushing the GPU that hard. Even with as detailed and clean as this is and running in 4K, it's just not enough to even make that card break a sweat. So a 3000 series, you're probably going to see a little bit less, but certainly not to the point where you should see any real huge difference in frame rate. Uh, we're just not taxing the GPU, and the CPU is half asleep at this point. It's probably a good point to also take a look at the options that we do have available. So obviously you can auto detect <laughs> for kicks and giggles. Let's just let it auto detect and see what it thinks we should be running here. Uh, sure, save my settings. So it thinks it thinks we should drop everything to medium. So this is why you don't trust the uh, the auto settings because come on. That's ridiculous. So we're gonna slide those back up to highest. <clears throat> we'll scroll up to the top and take a look at the options that are available. So obviously we do have uh, display mode. There is no uh, there is no full screen option. It's borderless full screen. Uh, I could run a whole different video on the problems that come with actual full screen versus borderless. But suffice it to say, borderless is what you've got here. Uh, if you have multiple monitors, you'll be able to select between those. Um, I have three running, so obviously I want to select the one that I'm, I want to play on. Uh, if I had multiple GPUs, or if I wanted to run this off of my integrated uh, IGP, I would certainly do that here. I don't know why I would, but I could. Resolution select, V-Sync. So V-Sync is going to sync up the monitor with the GPU and attempt to synchronize every frame. So if you see a lot of tearing, you know, that's where you, you turn your screen and you have like this hitching or you see lines across uh, uh, objects, that's usually referred to as tearing and you can you can usually smooth that out by running VSync. It is going to cap your uh, frame rate to whatever the maximum uh, refresh rate of your monitor is, but uh, if you're running into tearing, it's certainly better to run it at something that's locked to the monitor rather than just letting it run wild. Um, HDR, I have that turned off on my uh, on my monitor, but that's high dynamic range lighting. Um, high dynamic range lighting looks gorgeous. Unfortunately, it does not capture very well. So I've turned that off for this capture. Uh, I'm sure it will look gorgeous on your screen as well. There is a reason to cap your frame rate. Uh, if you let the frame rate just simply run, uh, you can cause all sorts of issues with, well, as I mentioned, you can have tearing issues where things become out of sync. Uh, it can also just cause your, your GPU to just eat power like candy. So if you want to constrain your, your GPU a little bit, this is where you would do that. Upscaling, we have a couple of different types here. Obviously, we can turn it off, and we're going to do that in a minute so you can see the difference. Uh, tau. Gen 4 and Gen 5, AMD FSR 2, NVIDIA, NVIDIA DLSS, and XESS. So we have uh, XESS is Intel's uh, uh, upsampling system, and you see that on their new cards. DLSS is obviously, uh, we talked a lot about that. Uh, we're on Gen 3 at this point. I'm not sure if this is a Gen 3 title yet. Uh, FSR is AMD's uh, upsampling system. They all carry a lot of the same attributes, uh, but DLSS seems to be the most mature at this point. If you're running an NVIDIA card, this is the obvious choice. 
Upscale quality, so you have a couple of different options here. So you have quality, balance, performance, and ultra performance. Uh, again, I could run a whole video, and I will, on uh, the differences between these upscale uh, abilities. Uh, but ultimately, if you have the frames to spare, quality is going to give you the best image. In fact, it's going to render uh, frames that are usually better than the original frame, as amazing as that is. Uh, whereas ultra performance, you may see some slight degradation. You usually see it at speed. Uh, you'll see like some slight smearing maybe. Uh, but I'm gonna turn on ultra performance just to show that and see what kind of difference that makes. Well, as you can see, not much. 105, 107. We weren't pushing the GPU to begin with, so it's not like we're, uh, we're needing the additional frames. But if you're having if you're having trouble or you're running on something like a 3060 or a 2080 or a 2070, you might consider those other options. Back to those options and scrolling back down. So now we get to the really interesting stuff, which is ray tracing. So ray tracing, if you're unfamiliar, this is where you can use any sort of ray traced capable card, uh, usually your 2000 series and above for NVIDIA. And you can use some technology that they've built in that allows you to achieve very realistic looking lights and shadows. And the way it does that, instead of having the artist have to bake in the lighting uh, where it's done by hand, you can simply define the behavior and the ray tracing engine will attempt to trace those lights from A to B and allow them to reflect off of objects, cast additional uh, shadows. Uh, there's, there's a lot of amazing technology behind RTX that uh, just really brings a, a scene to life. Uh, it's the difference between if a light is shining, say, through a banister and you see the individual banister legs versus a more soft and diffused look, which is more realistic to what you'd see in the real world. So that's what the aim is, to try and get lighting that looks and feels very realistic and doesn't have so many hard edges. Uh, it's, it's subtle in some games and definitely not so subtle in others, uh, but it's also very expensive on a GPU. Uh, we're just now getting to GPUs that can do it pretty effortlessly. Motion blur is garbage and you should turn it off, and I wish people would stop including it. Seriously, stop. The idea behind motion blur is that the faster you move, you can kind of blur the edges of things, and it's supposed to simulate motion. Please stop doing it. This next section is ambient occlusion. So ambient occlusion has a lot to do with what I just mentioned about RTX, and that's really where shading and rendering come together with lighting and create very realistic uh, images. And it's done that it's done with global illumination. And there's a lot of things that go into that illumination. So uh, you may see SSAO, you may see HBAO, you may see uh, just all sorts of different, uh, RTAO is another one. You may see all these different lighting techniques and shading techniques. And what they are is a way to do in real time that same sort of thing that I described where you have light coming through and casting a realistic shadow. It's the way that you make sure that light comes through and does not illuminate the backside of an object, for instance. Instead, it bends around that object in a realistic way. When you involve things like uh, reflections, now it becomes more complicated, and this, this global illumination system uh, allows you to do that in a way that does not uh, you know, trigger that uncanny valley, this doesn't look quite right sort of situation with players. So this diffused, non-directional lighting effect is what you see with ambient occlusion. Bloom is exactly what it sounds like. So that's where you have uh, kind of that blurry star field effect around lights or, uh, you know, just the, again, that kind of diffused light that looks like uh, the edges of things are slightly out of focus, maybe in the distance. This could be a headlight in the distance. This could be a street light. Uh, bloom can be done well, and it can be done poorly. I've seen Bloom just completely murder uh, a texture where you can't see the detail on a texture. So you really have to play with Bloom and decide whether or not uh, this completely cosmetic effect 
is pleasing to the eye or if, if it's done well or if it just should be turned off. Uh, in this game so far, it looks like Bloom looks great, so we're going to leave it on. This next one, Chromatic Aberrations, another one of those that can be a little bit controversial. Uh, what Chromatic Aberration is, is a developer can take the reds and blues on a object that's in motion and allow those to kind of streak a little bit. And when that object is in motion, it creates this cinematic effect that you get when you kind of whip your head from uh, one place to another. And uh, it can be used to great effect. Again, it can be very cinematic. Unfortunately, it can also cause motion sickness. So if you find yourself feeling motion sick playing a game, go look for something that says chromatic aberration or something very close to it and turn that off. You may see that that nausea goes away or that headache goes away. Uh, when it's done well, this can look great. Uh, when it's done poorly, it's a mess. Depth of Field's a fun one. So Depth of Field's another one that is used to create this cinematic effect. And you see it a lot in cameras where they'll create like a bokeh effect where you have the central subject is very clear and maybe the objects behind them are a little bit more blurry with even further back being completely uh, unreadable. So to do that in video games, you use Depth of Field. And what that does is it, again, creates something that is very in focus and leaves the background to be somewhat blurry. It creates a very realistic looking image uh, again, if you're having trouble with motion sickness, this may be something where you can turn this off and it may help because it's going to create a very crisp image that's clear across the board. Uh, so uh, this is another one that you can tinker with if you find yourself a little bit nauseous. These last settings are really the way that you can tweak the experience the most, and that's going to be your texture quality, shadows, effects, post-processing, view distance, and environment. Texture quality is exactly what it sounds like. Every character, every model, every building, every piece of everything in the game has a texture applied to it. So the amount of detail that you can pack into that is controlled by this particular setting. Higher is gonna be more clear and crisp and look its very best. Whereas you can lower it down to probably potato, but let's find out exactly what that looks like. This is gonna be kind of weird with everything else set to high, but character models may be set to potato so let's let's see what that looks like well, that's actually not bad at all I expected it to be way worse but no that's very clear so this should run on pretty modest hardware would be my guess if it's gonna look this good uh, with the quality turned all the way down let's turn it back up and see if we can notice any real difference some games just do a fantastic job with their their artwork and they hide this texture work so well that it's hard to even tell. Um, usually you can tell on armor. You know, you've got that scale effect on her, sh on her shoulders and sleeves and that kind of checked, uh, see if I can get closer to it, that kind of checkerboard uh, armored look to her cape. So those kind of details are lost usually when you turn down the, uh, the level of detail. It's also a good opportunity to talk about shadows. So when you look at the way that light reflects off of her armor and the way that uh, you get kind of that shining effect from this light that's just off this side here, uh, that's exactly the kind of uh, effects that you can adjust when you're looking at shadow quality. Effects quality, that's going to be uh, things like subsurface scatter scattering and particle density, uh, lighting and, uh, well, I say lighting, but that's mostly controlled by RTX. Um, but the subsurface scattering is a good example. So you have some effects like, for instance, Barbara's ear here. It's usually the easiest one to look at. If we had a light that shined through that part of her skin or illuminated that part of her skin, there's a good example. See how her nose kind of uh, reflects realistically. It doesn't look like it's a mirror. It doesn't look like it's something weird. It reflects the way that you'd expect skin to reflect, but it doesn't reflect in the same way that the the almost plastic looking armor of, the, uh, of her suit looks. So that kind of subsurface scattering allows things, allows light to pass through an object and cast a realistic shadow through that object. Uh, a really good example of this is usually ears, where you have visibility through an ear uh, where you know it's it's kind of semi opaque. Now we're getting we're not getting close enough for that here, but you kind of get the idea.
So this next one, post-processing quality is really kind of vague. I'm not exactly sure what they're talking about here because we've already covered a lot of the things that I would expect in post-processing quality. This can be things like subsampling or zooming or interpolation or sharpening or deinterlacing or denoising. You can, you can throw a lot of stuff in this bucket, so I'm not really sure what they're getting at here. View distance, I mean, you can figure out that view distance and environmental density, both of these are pretty simple. This is gonna be the number of, of objects that you find in the scene. Uh, I'm gonna guess that when you're on the street, there's gonna be a lot of like trash and that kind of thing. That's also gonna uh, go into this uh, effects quality. That's gonna be things like your particle density, maybe, you know, sparks coming off of fire, that sort of thing. View distance is literally just how far into the distance is the game going to render things like buildings. So we've kind of gone through all of these, and the only one that really uh, sticks out is post-processing quality. I'm not really sure what they're going, going for here. We might have to ask the team to clarify what all goes into that. I want to take a moment and take a look at accessibility. This is really important. I've seen a lot of games that kind of just, maybe you'll get subtitles, but it's very rare to see somebody put in a lot of work in this area. So it's wonderful to see that WB Games Montreal did the work. So we have multiple types of colorblind modes covered here. Never create an icon that is just a color because you have people who are colorblind. So you always wanna give somebody a color and also an icon that means something very obvious. This is obviously fire, this is ice, poison, fear. So it's very clear what these things are. Same thing with health bars. All these things have to be colorblind accessible so that way you can clearly see what's going on with your character. HUD scale, same sort of thing. Being able to raise and lower this, not just for people who have trouble with their eyes, but also maybe you're just sitting further back on your couch. Subtitles, I'm three quarters deaf, so I have a sincere appreciation when a company will actually do the work and give me not only subtitles, but ways to manipulate those subtitles to make them work for me. I can make them larger. I can add a background as intense or as thin as I'd like. Text to speech. If you have trouble reading this speech or the text, maybe this is something that you can use that will help you be able to more fully experience the game. There's a ton of little options here. Like, do you want to be able to trigger something by just hitting it once? Or do you want to have to mash the button in, you know, quick time events? Those kind of things like, here we go, escape frozen status, tap repeatedly or tap once. You know, this could be just a quality of life thing, or maybe you have issues where you can't tap like that. So, these are the things that allow every player to enjoy the game. And I really do appreciate uh, WB uh, Games Montreal putting the work on this. So thank you very much. There is one area that I wanted to test. Uh, I am seeing a lot of frame change with the motorcycle. So. Right now, we're, we've dropped all the way down to about 71 when we get all of these lovely RTX lit neon fun. And I'm curious to see what we're gonna see at speed with the motorcycle. So now we're down into the 60s. That looks like that bottomed out at 60 per minute there. So yeah, it seems like it seems like vehicles are going to be the the bottleneck for the game. I'm curious to see how this performs on other cards. The 4090 is barely able to keep up with 4K60. Maybe some additional driver work. Oh, hello. Some additional driver work or uh, optimization on the engine side might be necessary. Because this is with uh, everything set to quality. So just out of morbid curiosity, we're also going to set this to DLSS off. This is obviously going to be the worst performing area from the looks of it. So let's see what happens. Without all the added. Wow, so you can see how much RTX does uh, put stress on the system. We're, up, we're back above 100 frames per second with RTX uh, turned off. Obviously you lose some uh, fidelity 
on the lighting, but uh, if you're concerned about frame rate, it seems like RTX is a pretty big hit on this one. So let's do a little bit more experimentation here. We're going to turn DLSS off completely as well. So this is just raw power of the card. Seems like we're at about 102 with DLSS turned off. Get back on a major street here with some lighting. Yep, we're right around 107 now. So there's certainly some options to be played with, some levers to pull. I mean, certainly, oh, I guess I missed that setting. There we go. So yeah, that made effectively no difference whatsoever. We're still sitting in the 100 to 115 frames uh, range with DLSS turned off and RTX turned off. So obviously there's some settings that we can play with uh, they're going to give us different uh, kind of frame rate options at various costs. So uh, feel free to tinker with that when you get the game yourself and uh, make the experience your own. So there you have it, a full look at Gotham Knights on the PC and all of the options that are available to tweak and adjust to make the game perfect for you. We don't have the same locks as consoles do, so get out there and enjoy all the frames. I'm Ron Burke, Editor-in-Chief for GamingTrend.com. Let me know in the comments what other games you'd like to take a closer look at. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you again very soon.